Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back on our YouTube account and we are gonna be doing the breakdown when we slide over to Reddit with our Dimensional Heroes, guys. Now overall, these are probably some of the most highest utility heroes that we see within AFK Arena. Um, a lot of them have been kind of power crept over, but they did have a time and a place. So I'm gonna break them down and this is going to be a guide by Rakuday. I'm gonna put a link down below, guys. He put out some of the best faction guides that I've seen. I believe we're still waiting on the Celestials and the Hypogens, but I know there are a lot of you that do not go over to Reddit and are not on the subreddit for AFK Arena. That is the reason why I do love covering these guides. That way you can have some more exposure to them um, for all of the players that are not over on Reddit. And again, I will also leave the link to it down below. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right guys, so here we are with the breakdown for the dimensionals. Now, even looking at this guide, you can see it is a lot of con uh, content, a lot of words, but overall, there's a couple things that I want to really summarize. And it really gives you the logic behind each individual part with the hero summary, the relative strength, signature items, furniture, and engraving. And then of course, on the far right is the recommendations that he recommends for these builds. And I've been looking them over. He is really spot on with you know, 99% of the info in here. And I don't go into as much detail um, as he does as the, the very good, the good, the very good and things of that nature. But I wanna run through all of the heroes and kind of show you what they look what they look at, um, utility of the, the heroes that we're kind of seeing. So let's go ahead and start with Ayn's guys. Now, relative strength is good. Now, now this is very true. Now, he used to be absolutely top tier. Um, he's been re replaced by a lot of different heroes, but he still does have an incredible amount of utility within AFK Arena. And I know even early game when you can go ahead and um, usually borrow him through Solemn Vow, it works incredibly well. Looking at the recommended investment with him, uh, plus 30 signature item is good. The plus 20 is very good. Um, furniture, the nine of nine is really what you need on Ainz. Three of nine is good. Nine of nine is very good. And then the plus 30 and the plus 60 are good. Um, e even the E41 is very good as he denotes right there. And then the E60 is good. Now at this point of AFK Arena, um, He's a little bit further down the engraving list. He would not be actually one of the ones that I would priority within the engraving. Now, he used to be once upon a time. So if you have any players who have been playing AFK Arena for quite a bit of time, um, they probably have Ainz built because there was a time, again, similar to the Awakened version of Belinda when he was the top priority within AFK Arena. Then we get into El Beto, guys. Now, El Beto is the absolute top tier, in my opinion, when it comes to the Dimensional Heroes. She is really the, the fundamental building block or Lego um, to, to put into dimensional team comps to make them work, period. She is the one that does give, with the signature item, a massive boost to the attack and the defense rating for the entire team of dimensionals, which again is absolutely huge. One of the reasons why she is, one, again, one of the biggest heroes. And also she doesn't need a huge investment. That's the other thing here, guys. Um, plus 20 is good. Top 30 or the, the plus 30 is top tier. Absolutely, guys. You want to get this plus 30 ASAP. That is what unlocks the signature item is what unlocks the abilities for the attack and the defensive boost. Now, the three of nine is very good. Now, without this three of nine, she is utility goes really in the gutter because she doesn't have the immunity. This is the, the three of nine furniture is the big one that gives her the, the cheat death or the um the immunity, which is huge. Nine of nine, like he says here, average E30 is bad, really doesn't do much short of a little bit more defense, but the E60 is pretty decent just because of the attack rating. It goes to a 70%, which is a very, very big um, de debuff, the 70% attack rating from the base 50. But overall, guys, again, not a huge priority hero that I would do the engraving on just because now we have so many awakened heroes. We have so many heroes that fundamentally do not work without the E60. So again, even though it is good on here, um, I probably would not prioritize her. Now, one of my favorite um, 
one of my favorite heroes, Arthur, just from the lore aspect of it. Um, overall average, we still see him in a couple different formations, sometimes with Leonardo and Raku, um, sometimes, again, in, in a couple different formations. You can see the plus 20 is good, three of nine furniture is good. The rest of it, really not worth the investment. I feel like if they gave him a buff or an awaken version, um, it, it would kind of help. And again, he used to be a dimensional hero. He was actually, I believe, the first one that we ever had um, utilized with Ainz, utilized with um, with Scarlet quite a bit, again, for the, for the aura, again, with Raku. But overall, guys, not really any need to build this hero out much further than really a basic 203 build on Arthur. Now, Ezio. Ezio is another one, guys. Um, we've seen a lot of run with Ezio, even though he has average strength, because of the insta-kill that he still possesses, which is the reason why a lot of players do still build him. We've seen him very heavily used with the Awakened version of Brutus, but since we've had the introduction of a lot of new heroes, um, we're not seeing as much utility with him any longer. And you can see, guys, the 20 and 30 are average. Now, when it comes to a plus 20 signature item, just because it is relatively cheap, guys, the, the plus 20 for pretty much any heroes is kind of a baseline that you want to build, even if it's good, even if it's average. Um, the plus 20, just because of the sheer cost, it is, again, relatively cheap. The plus 30 is really what you want to focus on. And then, of course, guys, three of nine is bad. The nine of nine is good. That is right. The nine of nine furniture is just an absolute monster. Now, he actually does um, replace Mulan in some comps if you don't have Mulan built. But again, looking at the lineup of dimensional heroes we have right now, he has kind of fallen a little bit down the line. Not a huge priority to build out Ezio at this point of AFK Arena. Now, looking at Geralt, again, one of my absolute favorite heroes, um, goes to the relative strength good. You can see the plus 20, 9 of 9, the E30, the 3 of 9, and the E60 is bad. That is what I have him built. I added the plus 30 on him, so I actually went 309, 30. That's where I'm keeping him, guys. Um, even though the 30 is just kind of average, it gives a little bit of an increase, um, and it does ignore a little bit of defense, which is pretty good um, overall, but you, you're going to find his utility not super high. We do see him again as a sub in a couple of PVP aspects, but overall guys, the, the furniture is what you want on him. That is the crowd control aspect, which is huge. And then of course the engraving, um, just because of that rendability, gives him a little bit more haste, which of course allows his crowd control to actually trigger a little bit faster within. But again, we don't know at this point, guys. Now, Belinda has said over on um, Facebook, that Geralt and Yennefer are not coming to the garrison. Again, it, it, it there's really hasn't been much of a confirmation or anything of that nature, um, but they have said that they are not coming to the garrison. Don't know the rhyme or reason behind it, but we'll have to see exactly what comes in the future. Now, the last one, um, or the one before the last, we have Joan of Arc, guys. Now, Joan of Arc is probably one of the most pivotal heroes to build within the AFK arena, and when it comes to building her out, um, of the store, she is an absolute number one priority. I believe she is in, in the Labyrinth store, and she is the number one priority in the Labyrinth. You can see very good and good, very good. Nine of nine average, so a little bit less on the nine of nine, but very good and good. She's a hero, guys. The higher that you build her out, um, the really the better she's going to perform. Because remember, from the beginning, she is going to get immunity, which allows her to go ahead and alt. She's going to go right on the enemy side. So without having signature item furniture and engraving, um, she doesn't survive too much. She, she does have some survivability issues depending on the team you're fighting. When you build her out a little bit further, it kind of lessens that, that issue that we see. Now, of course, signature item, you want the plus 20 at a bare minimum. You want the three of nine furniture. And then that 30 engraving is where I built her. Just because the 60 engraving, it does provide a little bit more crowd control. But overall, guys, not a high, high utility um, because of the, the combat that she's in and, and kind of the utilization aspect of her. Um, I know a lot of players short of probably the PvP aspect do not build her up to that E60. So again, looking at her, you could do 20, um, 203, 30 would work. Even 30 to the 3 of 9 furniture to the 30 engraving um, would work. So the plus 30 signature item, the 303, 30 would work incredibly well and Joan. Then we have Joker, guys. Um, again, relative strength bad. He had his moment when he was released, guys. When you looked at Joker and Queen, 
Joker had a place doing a ton of damage in a bunch of different comps. Since Queen was there, um, Queen really didn't do anything at all. Um, unfortunately, it got to the point where now Joker does nothing. Queen still has utility in a lot of different formations. Not really a hero to garrison if you didn't get him during the exchange. Not a huge, huge hero to get. Again, you can see average, average, bad, and very bad for a majority of things. Um, he worked pretty much in one formation, but now it has been so far down the line shelved that, again, not a lot of utility um, with the hero himself. Then we have Leonardo. Leonardo is a very good relative strength. I love that. Um, he, again, is a very important hero when you're building out. Um, I believe he is in the Challenger store, so Merlin is the priority. Leonardo is the secondary on there. But you can see, guys, good top tier with that 9 of 9. That, of course, is that crowd control aspect. Um, good at 30, but 33 is very good. You have to make sure with Leonardo, because he has multiple forms of crowd control, um, that you actually have the ability to land the crowd control when he doesn't get crowd control. So you want to really make sure, guys, that you are landing that crowd control when it comes to Leonardo, which is the reason why the E33 is what people do build him up to. And then, of course, the E60 is good, but again, probably not going to be one of the, the biggest heroes that I would build to the E60 first, just because there are so many heroes within the priority. All right, guys, the second page of this massive guide, we have Baba Yaga right there. You can see relative strength is average on her. The plus 30 is good. The three of nine is good. The E60 is good, which is kind of crazy because the nine of nine furniture and the E30 is bad. Um, but overall, that is where she makes a big difference. Again, there are a couple PVP slots that they use her in are very, very specific comps that we're still seeing, um, that we're still seeing Baba Yaga kind of utilized in. Um, she does require, again, a, a pretty decent investment for the utility for her to be there. But overall, within team comps, she does pretty well. I feel like a lot of hero or a lot of players just don't know how to use her properly. But again, when it comes to Cursed Realm, uh, Twisted Realm, Nightmare Corridor, even when it comes to Treasure Scramble, um, she's not finding slots in her, the best in slot teams, which is a little bit disappointing because I was really hoping that she would be much stronger. Um, she she is pretty strong again depending if you have her built if you already have her out there um versus building her now she's probably again not a hero that i would prioritize building right now in afk arena but down the line now next one we look at is merlin guys merlin is the absolute priority out of the challenger store um very good and has a ton of utility in a ton of places and also you'll see right down here guys very important doesn't need the engraving the e30 engraving not too big um even the e60 kind of average he is a hero that works with a very very minimal build you can even go a 209 for him works incredibly well 309 will do the same um you want to get his furniture asap um because that is really big big impact on him um casting the ultimate when he comes into battle is huge now looking at Mulan, Mulan is another one, guys, very good relative strength. Um, we see her in a lot of formations. We see her in a lot of best in slot formations in the Treasure Scramble. And she also does have a couple of appearances within the Curse Realm and the Nightmare Corridor, guys. You can see good top tier with that nine of nine, which of course is gonna be the ultimate ability. And then we have the E60 on her is very good when it comes to the engraving. Definitely a hero, again, that you do wanna build out. Now, Nakaruru gets into the very bad category, unfortunately. Um, you can see the plus 30 even just takes it to average. But her build overall, even when she was released, guys, a lot of players picked her up. Um, th there's no way you're going to garrison her. There's no way you're really going to use her at all. The utility isn't there. I don't know anywhere in AFK Arena um, that she's being run. And most players don't even have her at all. So again, a hero really not worth building. Now, Prince is, again, kind of a hero that had his day, um, provided a lot of crowd control. You can see the 9 of 9 furniture is good in there um, because he gets the rewinds. Um, actually gets a little bit cheaper on those rewinds. But overall, guys, the damage isn't there. The, the crowd control, um, really not there. He was amazing when he came out. Um, a lot of players used him best in slot. But again, with the power creep, everything else in AFK Arena, he has now went to the relative strength bad category. Now here we do have Queen. Good. Now again, when Joker Queen came out, Joker was the absolute priority, the number one that players used. Um, then we slowly got into Queen found a spot within the five pole and just 
absolutely dominated. You can see guys the 9 of 9 in the E33 right here. Again, she is one engraving wise, the E33. You have to make sure, similar to Leonardo, that her crowd control is effective and the crowd control actually works. Um, if not, she's just going to get crushed, guys, like a lot of the um, heroes do. Now, looking at Yukio, he was, I believe, still the first only um, purchase only hero, but again, very bad to bad to very bad with relative strength. Again, a hero that nobody uses. Um, the only hero that was 50 bucks to buy when he came out. Couldn't get him any other way. Um, in he was again used in a few formations very early, but again, he had a very short-lived time. Um, and then of course nobody uses him, just like Nakaruru doesn't really have a place. Now, Yennefer, again, very good. We are still seeing her in a bunch of different formations. Treasure Scramble, she is prevalent. Um, there are a significant amount of places that we're still seeing Yennefer being utilized, which is awesome to see, guys. Now, she provides a couple things. Now, the Magical Barrier, of course, is a little bit situational, but I really feel with the new hero that we have, um, Demia, that is coming out on Tuesday, Yennefer is going to be utilized within the formation. We can already see it. We've tested it um, even over on the test server. Works incredibly well running them two together um, just because of the synergy of the abilities that they possess. Seems like, again, Yennefer is still going to have probably even more of a predominant place within AFK Arena than we're seeing as of right now, which is very cool to see um, that if you built her out, again, G Geralt and Yennefer, I, I really didn't like that The Witcher really got done um, wrong in my opinion with the build and the utility that we're seeing, but Yennefer absolutely found a spot. Then of course, guys, we got the two new heroes that just dropped today that were available to pick up. Now we have Amelia, which is a very good relative strength. You can see guys, very good top tier with that plus 30. Of course, that's the energy regeneration. The three of nine and the nine of nine are very good. Um, the E30 is very good. And then the E60, you can see there is a star there. Um, kind of the PVP aspect that, that would work incredibly well. Um, again, I feel like the E60, she is a little bit further down the, the priority list where the E30 is an absolute priority, guys. So taking her to a 30930 is where I built her to, um, just for the utility wise. And again, the sheer cost of getting all those elemental cores to take them to an E60. There were a couple other heroes um, that have a much higher priority than her. Um, and, and we'll look at, of course, Rem right down here, guys. Again, this is another one where very good, good. Top tier with the three of nine, very good, very good, and then good. So it kind of falls in all categories. Now, one thing to remember with Rem, and this is why the, the, the reason or the logic why I chose Rem, if you could only build one, why I would build Rem first, guys, is there are formations that are entirely built around Rem within a couple of the game modes because of the damage she puts out. So when you look at the recommend recommendations over here, um, 30960 is where I built her out, simply for the fact that I wanted to continue to add stats onto her and also provide an incredible amount of damage. Now she is still being run again in the Twisted Realm, the Cursed Realm, Nightmare Corridor. We are seeing her in teams. Treasure Scramble, she is in one of the best in slot teams within that Treasure Scramble. So it is really, really cool to see that again, they have a lot of utility where Geralt and Yennefer didn't have as much. And then some of the older heroes don't really have very much utility at all. So very, very cool to see those heroes. Now again, guys, Rockaday put out these guides. Um, crazy absolute crazy the the time and effort that i know goes into these it, it is incredible to see these guides that is the reason why i wanted to cover it rem or amelia even down here i believe he does note short term rem is the better choice again for the compatibility and the teams um we're gonna have to see exactly where amelia is going to be used guys and then i love he broke out the priorities i, I do love it challenger store we have merlin joan just like we covered and then of course albedo is the big one even looking at the right um albedo and queen still have a lot of utility within afk arena merlin joan absolutely leonardo arthur um arthur not so much i might even choose baba yaga over arthur again just because we have a pretty decent solid lineup of tanks um but mulan of course th this is Either or, I feel like Mulan, possibly for Leonardo, but again, you could kind of play it either way. Um, I still like the builds out here. Um, Joan, Arthur, yeah, Baba Yaga, Albedo, absolutely, guys. 
again, Albedo is really the, the key piece to so many formations within the dimensional comps. Same with Merlin. Merlin does incredibly well, guys. So again, big shout out. Um, it it kind of goes through what he's going to do next and what he's kind of focusing on. Again, over on Reddit, guys, there are so many of these cool guides that he has put out. He's actually put out one for all of the four primary factions that I'm going to cover. If you guys want me to, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these guides. And as always, thank you guys for watching.